At this station we're learning basic fire attack and hose advancement. Generally what we're doing is teaching the students how to advance the hose without exhausting themselves, the proper way to get the hose in and out of the areas that we need to be, tight spaces. Fire attack, different patterns, why we need to use different types of patterns, how it affects the fire, how it affects our safety, and the pressure of the hose, how it affects their ability to attack the fire. Today we're going to be learning uh, basic hose evolution drills from start to finish, you know, basically from you take the load off the engine, how to bleed it, what to do, look for, how to really bleed it properly, patterns. We're going to go inside, we're going to go from shagging hose to, uh, you know, moving with the hose efficiently without killing yourself and then when we get to the fire we're going to be learning the pencil, you know, watch, kind of see how that affects the fire and the gases and everything. What kind of hoses, hose loads do we have on engines? What do, what do we call them? Minute man, shoulder load, pre-connects. So they're going to be like, hey, grab that, take it to the front door. So you're going to take it off, you know, you're flaking, you get there. You're going to have kinks in the hose no matter how good you lay it out. So you're going to take the hose and uh, pencil it pretty fast because that will help get the kinks out. So you get the hose out and then you're also bleeding the air from the line. So when you go in, you're not just spraying them into air. And you're checking your pattern. You don't want to go into the wide fog because if you do, you get inside the fire room, you spray, you're going to fog yourself out and give yourself steam burns. So you guys know how to check. You want about a 30 degree pattern. So if you're not sure, hold the no look at the nozzle and be like, okay, it's within that that range. So whenever in doubt, just look right here. So okay, figured that out. Do you guys know why we pencil the ceiling when we get into a fire? Yep, cool down the room. So cool down those gases that could potentially turn water into steam and burn you guys out. If it's cool enough, it'll be doing an indirect attack on the fire. So it'll be raining down off the roof and back onto the fire. So when we get in there, you'll see, because it's not going to be hot enough to where all that's going to be converted to steam, you'll see how it's going to rain down on the fire and blacken it out just by penciling it. So saying that, there's a, a what type of fire attacks? There's two types. I, I, I gave you one, indirect. Yep. So cooling down the thermal layer, that's indirect. Could be direct too, but direct is just putting water right on the fire. So, and then also there's situations where if you're going upstairs and there's like a knee high wall or whatever, you know, there could be fire right here. You don't know what's going on. You don't know how hot it is. So you can just, you know, pencil the ceiling and bounce it off the ceiling and rain down on it. Handling hose for starters, you guys, you know, you want the tip of the nozzle to be about an arm's length away, kind of like that. So you have, uh, you have total control of that hose. And if it's right here and close to the body, you're going to be using your whole body to direct that hose. And you you want to have as much movement with your arms as you can because you don't want to be killing yourself, you know, to get in tight spots. So. Never let go of the bail. Yep. That's where your control is. This is just holding the weight. Never use the handle because if you're using the handle, you're obviously holding the hose too close to it. It's not, you know, guard the hose. There's a lot of pressure in it. So, hose advancement from this position. What would you guys suggest I do if I were to have to go forward? Slide. So, you can duck walk. I turn it off and stand up. Yeah, but there's fire. Yeah, so. Advancing as fast as you can. You can stand up and duck walk, but it wastes a lot of time. What, what about the patterns for fire attack? Hold up. Hold up. Yeah, so you're, you're fogging a straight stream, but like what we talk about here is your patterns to use when you're open your stream, your TZ and O patterns to interrupt the thermal layer, to get rid of the crap, these fuels that are coming off of the fire, to come down and hit the seat of the fire. To, to attack the fire. So what we're saying about indirect, it's not hot enough in there to create steam. So indirect, you can hit it off the ceiling and it could all come rain down on the fire. And when we get in there, you'll see how greatly that affects your fire. Indirect, it have to cover a pretty wide area. So this is one way, uh, like she's saying, you have your, your knee locked over the hose, which is gonna keep it there. And that allows her to move pretty freely with it. Uh, this is for hoses with a little less pressure, so as you control it because you're not worried about that force pushing back on you. So this is a good one if you're going to be there for a while just working. So if there's a lot of pressure on the hose, you know you got a hot pump going. Uh, 
this one here, the holes between your knee and your belly. So, and also your arm, it's all the rock in your foot, so you're not going to be feeling yourself getting kicked out. I have a lot of pressure to back against the down, because otherwise you're going like this, you have no control. You guys have all kind of felt whenever a lot of pressure it creeps back on you, and that's when you get to, you know, back here and you can't control it. Even the guy behind you is like, you know, I can only hold so much. So, get out here, hold it in your hip. Lay your belly over it and push down on it. So when you're down here, you have control of it. I can still control my, like I have a lot out in front of me. I control my pattern up here too, okay? But this has no pressure, so we'll be mainly down here and controlling it from here and watching how the patterns affect the fire we get in there. All right, who wants to start jumping in, working on uh, penciling and then uh, your TZL, or it can be any letters. It can be, you know, A, B, C, whatever you want, LOL. As long as you're hitting, you know, the thermal layer and the fire. So, last group, they were so concentrated on hitting that thermal layer, they would, like, you know, barely hit the fire. But that's our main main objective is to hit the fire, so. All right, jump on it. Let's get rotated so we can mask up and go inside. Huh? Do a... Yeah. Because if that thing blows, where, where's, it, where's the hose at right now if it blows? Yeah. There you go. Stay on the same side as the hose. Both your feet on the same side. You're just putting your weight over it. Okay. Let's pretend those plants are your fire. Right. Yeah, I'm just using the fire. Okay. No, like, so your trees. So here's the ceiling. Your T's are going to be down here and you're coming down to the seat of the fire. Okay, your Z, you're sweeping the seat of the fire. Alright. <laughs> well, it's pretty basic, so... But if you have enough long, long hose, it just hits your helmet. Exactly. You don't want it up here because if it does, and it you can get all that water it pressure right face. In your face. <laughs> yeah. So keep, give yourself enough um, room to control it. Okay, let's mask up and we'll see how it affects the fire inside. Also, the guy shagging, you don't want to kill your nozzle team. They're gonna be if they have to be pulling hose, they're gonna they're gonna be hating life. So try to help them out. Try to get as much hose in there as you can. So when they first go in, they're gonna be moving pretty quick. So you don't really have time to make any big loops and kind of wheel them in there. So go back 15, 20 feet, pick it up, and walk it up with them. And then take whatever else you have, throw it in there. So if they keep moving, they can. They have enough hose to, and you can keep pulling hose into them. But if you're going upstairs or something, or tight hallways, that loop right there that you made, you just flip the hose in on itself, or just basically flip it, and you have, you know, 10, 15 feet of hose there. That's good. You can, for going upstairs, you can just have that in one hand, have your tools. Going downstairs, you can just throw it and let it roll. So, yeah, basically your main thing, get as much hose out here and there. Make it easier on yourself. So. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna give you a pretty handy tip that will save you for the rest of the day. Carry the weight on your hips. Okay. My shoulder straps are pretty fairly loose. I don't carry any weight on my shoulders. Carry it on your hips. Because a lot of kids will walk through here with this completely loose, just hanging out. So. When I have my big coat on, it looks like I'm wearing a little tutu because I have it's pretty tight on my hips. Most of the weight are right here on the love handles. Okay, so a lot of kids are doing this because their backs are killing them. Take the pressure off of here. It should be snug, but not tight. Don't yank this down to begin with. 
Okay, did you guys catch that? It will really save your back. Okay, awesome. All right. Let's go in. So you get to the door, you check your pattern. We already checked that. You bleed the line, it's already playing. You'd have the person backing you up to come feel where the heat is. With your bare hand, you wouldn't do it because you got to control that line. If something happens and the door blows off and you go away, no one's controlling that nozzle and fire is going everywhere. So, have the person backing you up do it. So, with your bare hand, though. So, you feel any major heat anywhere, really? It's kind of hot right here. Okay, so you're going to stay below this line. So, you're going to be either crouching or on your knees. So, looking in, the door's open. You can see pretty good down low like this. So if, if you want, you can either crouch like this and duck walk in, or do the drag like you can. So, right across it. I noticed uh, you guys kind of bunched in on each other, so we got kind of congested and people were kind of confused on what to do. And uh, I noticed, yeah, a lot of some there's a lot of hoes, but everyone was right there, so kind of some communication got lost there. So you'll you'll figure out like as long as you're within sight, sound, or touch of a firefighter, you should you're you're okay. Like, of course, a backup man needs to be right there to help out his nozzle man. But if you're shagging hose, if you can hear him, they're like, okay, let's advance. Okay, he, he needs more hose. So as long as you're doing that, that should the fix the communication mix ups and stuff like that. So, so my name is Karen Miller. See, like, you know, I'm returning as an instructor this year, but I've been here before as a cadet. The most challenging thing, I think, is um, the workload, I guess, just having everything coming to you all at once within three days, something that you need to spread out and learn. You know, you take all year to learn, you come and do it in three days, it's pretty exhausting to go all day long. I have lifelong friends that I met at Cadets and I'm here back as an instructor. The most rewarding thing is coming back and being able to teach them what I learned as a cadet and knowing that, you know, all the information that I have now, I was in their shoes so I know how they feel, how they're reacting to everything, you know, no sleep, exhaustion, how they're reacting and it's fun to come back and say, be able to say, you know, I was there and I understand what you're going through, I understand that this is all completely new. So it's more of just, it's not really 
hard, you know, work. It's not really hard, you know, get in there, do this. We expect you to do this. It's repetition. It's, you know, I'll show you how to do it. And if you don't get it, let's do it again. And that's what makes it really rewarding.